and welcome to episode 110 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 3rd of April. So welcome everybody, I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have got some knitting, some crochet, some sewing to show you. I also have a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread on Ravelry to answer. I have some confessions. <laughs> and lastly, I've got a shop update info at the end. I've got 14 new colourways to show you. So some of which are from um, the advent that I did just at Christmas. Um, but I thought I'd make them proper colourways and I've got a couple more as well to show you. So that's coming at the end um, and my shop update will be this evening that's the 3rd of April at 7 p.m British summer time but I'll talk more about that at the end of the podcast you can find me on Instagram Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I have my own website crafthousemagic.co.uk where I sell my handmade project bags hand dyed yarn stitch markers progress keepers and also needles and accessories from higher higher so we have a couple of make-alongs going on in the Ravelry group and one which came to an end at the end of March and that was the retro mail and I have some prizes to give away. So first of all, the lovely Jen of Castleview Yarns donated these beautiful yarns and we've got frozen fractals at the top and fear of the dark at the bottom there, aren't they beautiful? So Jen's got her own website which is castleviewyarns.com if you want to look on there. Um, and to go along with that, we've got some beautiful stitch markers from Viv at Beth Betty Arthur Creations and she has an Etsy shop and there's a cute little cassette tape and Pac-Man stitch markers there to go as a prize and that prize is going to go to Nana Pay, who's Carol from Canada. So um, Carol, if you'd like to email me at crafthousemagic at gmail.com uh, to give me your address and I'll get that posted off to you. And we have another prize we have two really lovely dye candy skeins in between the cracks colorway and a rather um 90s sort of themed um brightly colored skein there um those are going to go along with another set of stitch markers from viv at betty arthur creations which is a shop on etsy with some 70s themed stitch markers there so those are going to go to Jules41. Um, so congratulations, Jules, and you're from the UK. So again, if you email me on crafthousemagic at gmail.com uh, with your full address, I can get that posted out to you. So congratulations. We have another two um, make-alongs. So there is the What A Lot Of Potter Cal, which I'm doing in collaboration with the lovely Becky um, from the Back To Blighty podcast. And we're doing Harry Potter things from this book. Harry Potter Knitting Magic and I'm working on a scarf which I'll show you a little bit later on um, but if you pop over to the Back to Blighty podcast uh, you'll be able to see how Becky's been getting on with her jumper so um, there's that going on in the Ravelry group as well so it's anything out of the book you can come and join in and the, actually the scarf that I'm working on was actually in um, a knitting magazine at some point as well so if you've got it out there it still counts and um, I have a new make along. So I've decided we need to do a spring shawl along. So starting from, or well, say it started from the 1st of April, even though I've announced it a little bit late. And that'll run right until the end of June. So you have plenty of time to knit a shawl. So it can be any shawl pattern you like in any yarn. And actually, if you've got a shawl that's on the needles and you're, you've done under 50%, I'll let that count as well. So I'm gonna be drawing prizes from a discussion thread um, on Ravelry for that, rather than having a finished object thread just so that it gets everyone chatting away so if you hang on till the end of the podcast where I chat about my new yarn colorways I'll chat about some of the shawls that I might be casting on with those um, so that's all the sort of make-alongs but we did have a giveaway on last week's episode for the lovely thin hat pattern designed by Amanda she's actually given all the proceeds from this pattern to cancer research um, and she kindly gave us three coffees to give away on the podcast so I drew three comments from the last week's episode and the winners are Ellen Pierce, 
Sit and Knit with Vivette and Robin Manley. So if your name's called out just there, if you email me on crafthousemagic at gmail.com with your Ravelry name, I will get those um, sent over to you through Ravelry. And one of those winners was Viv, who gave some of the stitch markers as a prize for the what I talked about before so that was lovely so congratulations you three so that's all the announcements for the beginning of the podcast let's get into the good stuff so let's start with the knitting I have a finished object to show you so these socks have been on the needles for ages I had actually got halfway through one of the toes and ran out of yarn and I'm having trouble seeing which one it is it's this one so um you might be able to see if I zoom in a little bit so you might be able to see um, that I have knitted this toe in a sort of grey blue and then I've got to there and ran out of yarn but I did find some grey that was pretty close so I used that for the rest of the toe um, so and then I used the new grey I'd picked up for the heels and this is my um, living on a prayer colourway that's in my shop I just saw it on my shelf and I thought that that's as close as I'm going to get <laughs> without dyeing up some new and I think that's close enough um, so these are going to be for Adam and we'll have a matching pair because I knitted a whole sock tube and I split it into four socks I've added afterthought heels in the living on the prayer colourway that I used for the end of the toe as well um, so those are all ready to wear I actually did a tutorial on how I split my big long sock, 100 gram sock tube into four socks or two pairs of socks um, and I'll leave a link for that up there and also I've got a tutorial on how I did my afterthought heel as well so there we go a finished pair of socks lovely <laughs> one thing off the needles I think I've actually what I did as well is I've got one more pair of socks on the needles and I've actually sent um, the needles and the yarn to my mum to knit because she was a bit bored and she wanted something to do so I've sent her the second sock to knit on plus I don't like knitting on it very much because it's a bit splitty as the Katier yarn I was working on if you watch my whips video that I did a couple of weeks ago I did mention it there and they were a sort of a gradient colour of socks so I've sent those off to mum so hopefully we shall be able to knit most of the tube and I can just do the heel and the toe and then that'll be another pair finished and I'll have no socks on the needle so I've cheated a bit <laughs> thanks mum <laughs> she'll be very chuffed that I've mentioned her on the podcast bless her so I have some more knitting to show you so I have my Harry Potter scarf that I was working on for the what a lot of Potter cow and last week I think I'd done to about there um, so I haven't done loads more but I've done the bus repeat now again Ta -da! so basically it's this bit repeated three times for the length of the scarf um, it's knitted in a tube make sure I don't knock my little pandas off <laughs> so it's knitted in a tube um, and then you fold it over and add some tassels to the end once it's blocked um, and basically Adam's already decided it's going to be for him <laughs> even though that wasn't the intention to start with um, so it's knitted with four colours it's I've basically used my own colourways and it's purple rain ordinary world is the grey Mustardy yellow colour is walking on sunshine. The blue is because the night. Oh, and that's it. <laughs> Four colourways, and it's on my Aran Merino Aran base. Um, and it's basically one skein of the contrast colours and then the main colour it says you need five but I've got a feeling that it might only take me four to be honest the way that I'm using the yarn at the moment I haven't long I think I got to about there before I needed to start on my second skein of the ordinary world um, and because that's sort of one repeat and you've got to do it three times I don't think I'm going to use five skeins of the grey colour but there we go. My favourite section, I think, is the platform nine and three quarters symbol. Um, but I'm getting there slowly. I'm very tempted to cast on something else from the Harry Potter book. But there's always loads of things that I want to cast on, so we'll see. <laughs> um, so that's my... I think that's all my knitting, actually. Oh, no, I have another project. 
so I have a third knitting project to show you and it's my Gwanwin sweater so I've knitted about two inches maybe inch and a half two inches <laughs> so it doesn't seem very much but now I've got into it I feel like I'm going to go faster let's see if I can focus a bit closer on this there we go we've got some cables and some lace work and once that's sort of stretched out a bit you'll be able to see it a little bit better i think um so it's a top down sweater but i'm actually working um a cardigan making it into a cardigan really because i think i'll wear it a little bit more so it's knitted in a dk yarn and it's my own colorway purple haze and i'm using my merino base because it'll be nice and soft um, so I'm really excited to see how that's going to come on. I'm hoping to get loads done before next week so I can basically have all the lace done. That'll be exciting. So there we go. That's that. Um, I shall show you the colour in the cake so that you can perhaps see it a little bit better. There we go. That's purple haze. So that's my three knitting projects. But I have a crochet project to show you. And in fact, it's a finished crochet project so i'm very excited to show this i feel like i've been working on this forever <laughs> this is my nature's walk blanket and it's a beautiful pattern by sandra from cherry heart and she did it as a crochet along i think it started maybe it was about november last year and i've just finished it <laughs> The border bit seemed to take me really ages to do sort of one row so that's why it took me a couple of weeks to finish that off but it does finish it off really nicely. So I bought the yarn as a kit from Black Sheep Wools. So Sandra had designed it with all the colours that go together really lovely but unfortunately when I got mine some of the colours were replaced. So this pink was actually in the original set which I went out and bought separately because I really liked how it worked with the other colours um, rather than a pink that was sort of the replacement for that colour um, in the new kit. I'm not sure whether they've got the original original colours in the kits now but um, I'm glad I did get hold of some of that light pink because I think that looks really nice. The actual edging was supposed to be in like an oatmeal colour which I did prefer but I couldn't warrant buying another eight balls just because I wasn't as keen because it look, still looks quite nice in the creamy colour um, but I think I would have preferred it a little bit more with the oatmeal but I'm still really pleased with it so hopefully you can sort of see um see how that works all together but now i can have it as a little cozy blanket to sit on the sofa so i actually did an extra 12 squares compared to what the pattern said so that the layout sandra had drawn um i couldn't obviously use it because i got more squares so i just laid them all out on the floor i did mine 10 squares by six squares instead of i think uh, i can't remember what the dimensions were originally but i had 12 extra and the only way i could lay them out was 10 by six really the edges are curling up very slightly but i think i will just quickly give it a block so that these little picots um stick out in the right sort of orientation without curling up slightly it, it doesn't actually look too bad um, but if i just give it a little block i think that'll look even nicer so there we go that's my nature's walk blanket finished yay <laughs> let's fold it up out the way i think it just looks lovely folded up like that there we go i'll just pop that to the side so that's all the crochet i've got to show you but i do have some sewing so barbara would you like to come over and show us what you've got on thank you very much barbara so barbara is wearing my sort of mini mouse inspired <laughs> frankie t-shirt so if you'd actually seen i'd put up a video on i think it was monday or tuesday um showing you exactly how i sewed this so if you're interested on in how i assemble the frankie t-shirt you might want to have a look at that and i'll put a link at the top here so it's from some fabric i picked up from ebay and it said it was a viscose jersey it doesn't it feels quite 
cottony to me though so I'm not sure whether it actually was or not but it feels quite nice so that's all that matters um, and I combined it with some black um, jersey scraps that I had in my stash which was so good to actually use small pieces for something um, and I just paired it together so it looks a little bit like Minnie Mouse really so I did intend to make this so that when we go to Disneyland Paris or when we were going to go to Disneyland Paris um, later in April I would have worn this but it was all ready for our next trip <laughs> So the pattern is the Frankie t-shirt from Tilly and the Buttons and it's from her stretch book. Um, there are a couple of other lovely patterns I want to have a go from that book as well. So um, watch this space. <laughs> so the pattern I modified slightly in that I used a neckline from the Agnes t-shirt also from Tilly and the Buttons because I felt that the Frankie one was a bit high for me. So I reduced the neckline by just placing the pattern pieces from the Agnes top over the Frankie t-shirt, marking on the pattern um, after I'd modified the t-shirt itself as well, so that then I could keep duplicating this pattern. I do show it in a bit more detail on the video that I put up at the weekend as well, so... Um, I'm really pleased with how it came out actually. It feels really comfy and I know to be honest I've made quite a few Frankie t-shirts like this um, and I know that it's an, a shape that I'm, I really like wearing. I paired it with a black neckline and I actually only had shorter pieces so I ended up piecing them and I think that the joins are up here. You can't see them too much so I'm quite happy with them being joined together. Um, as long as it's sort of not round the front here, that's fine. Um, so I look a little bit like Minnie Mouse in it. <laughs> I'm not quite sure where I'll wear it, whether I'll wear it anywhere else but to Disneyland, but we'll see. <laughs> it's all a bit of fun, isn't it? Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> So I've also cut out the pieces for the Vogue coat that I was wanting to make and this is proof, look, <laughs> it's a grey viscose wool mix um, which, I'm, which I've been excited to make for absolutely ages and I was a bit nervous about choosing my sizes. So it is a, a sort of casual, not particularly fitted um, coat but because I hadn't made a coat before I was just a bit nervous about picking my sizes so I finally worked out what sizes I wanted and sort of graded um, the hips out wider because <laughs> that's what I normally have to do um, and I've cut it out now so what I'm going to do is assemble the the shell of the coat and then decide whether that fits okay or not and if it does I may line it um, with some sort of viscose fabric maybe just so that it finishes it off nicely because the pattern itself isn't um actually made to have lining but i think i'd like to have lining in it just to make it um a little bit more finished and it, it is slightly itchy as well so if i had the wool against the, my skin on my arms it might get on my nerves so watch out for how i've got on with that next week so i've also got some other sewing to show you so I've shown you this block a little while ago and, and I actually pieced it at a class, I think it was a Lynn Edwards class a couple of years ago um, and it's been in my stash and I'd actually added some triangular bits here so that I could put it on um, sort of on point and have it as like a wall hanging but I decided I wouldn't actually have it on my wall because it doesn't really go with the decor in any of my rooms so I thought well I'll make it into a bag instead so I removed the corner bits that I'd added and I've actually put some wadding on the back and done some stitching so I'll see if I can get up close to the camera so you can see the vermicelli that I've done so there we go so it's it's a vermicelli stitching and I've done that basically all over the piece but I've done it in different threads so on the pink I've done it in a sparkly pink thread um, on this darker blue I've done it in a, a blue that fades into the background um, and then this fabric is actually slightly different from the edge blue um, and I did work out that that one that this thread would go really nicely on this piece and then I used the same thread on the outside bit but I didn't realise it didn't go quite as nicely with the outside squares 
but I'm, I'm reasonably happy with it so that's the one part of the bag finished um, but I needed to make a piece for the other side on this there was um, areas where I turned up the fabric um, to make this sort of 3d slightly 3d effect and and it makes it look a bit curved as well um, it's most obvious on this edge bit here where I've basically got a square folded over placed on top of here and then you sort of peel back um, the edge so that it curves around and it gives you the effect of more like a circle rather than a square not doing very well at holding up things today am I oh dear so I decided I wanted to do another sort of folded project to go on the other side of the bag so I was looking through one of my Jenny Raymond books that I'd got and I found a pattern that I thought would go quite nicely with it. Now, the colours on this aren't my favourite, but I did think that that pattern would work really nicely because it's a similar style of turning back those sort of um, folded pieces of fabric so that you can see the fabric underneath. So I thought I'd have a go at that. So I've made the fabric so I've made the piece that you're then supposed to turn back so that's what that looks like but obviously I haven't started turning back the pieces of fabric yet so this will be folded back here and you'll be able to see a fabric on the inside so if I can try and open it up a little bit so it'll look something like that but obviously a lot neater <laughs> Um, so all these are made of hexagons that are folded over. In the centre here, I've basically got um, six folded over hexagons over a hexagon in the background. Um, so then there's going to be lots of pulling open the seams here. It's going to be difficult for me to show you, but um, maybe on the next episode or whenever I finish this piece or I've got time to work on it, um, I'll be able to show you that a little bit better. But you get the idea of where the colour placement is. Um, I basically did all the assembly and I'm, I've just bagged it out onto a piece of fabric so that it'll show very slightly on the edge when I mount it um, on the side of the bag so there we go so that will be one side and this will be the other um and this bag is going to be for taking my projects to my quilt group when that's back on so that is all my sewing projects for today i was going to show you my cross stitch but i've only done a tiny bit so i'm going to leave that till next week so but i am keeping on top of doing at least a little bit each week anyway so i've got a couple of questions from the ask me anything thread the first of which is from laurie who's muggle studies on ravelry and she was asking what are my tips on sewing straight on a sewing machine so first of all i tend to use a little bit of washi tape or masking tape that i can put on the bed of my sewing machine so that when I'm sewing along I can follow the edge of the material along that piece of washi tape or masking tape um, and make sure that I'm show sewing as straight as possible and that's ideal if you're not sewing right on the edge of the material you're sewing a little bit in and it's then sometimes harder to keep straight. I also suggest that if you're doing quilting so if you're using a quarter inch seam you use a quarter inch foot like this one that's got a little bit of metal across the edge of the foot where you can follow along and it's much easier to follow along the, the fabric with that guide on the edge um, than just having a normal flat quarter inch foot where it's just got this edge measurement having that bit of metal there is really helpful so that's another tip um, I think sometimes slowing your machine down a little bit can help so if you just if you've got um, a machine where you've got a regulating switch on your machine and you can reduce the speed that can help or just be a little bit more gentle when you're pressing your presser foot on the floor um, of how fast you're going um, you can always put masking tape directly on your project <laughs> <laughs> if I'm doing quilting and I'm doing striped quilting I'll put masking tape across the work so that I can then just follow along the edge of the masking tape so I don't have to worry that I might veer off in the middle of the work so that's quite useful sometimes 
um i think that's it really so i hope that helps laurie um my second question is from steph um who's indie wool and she was asking have i got a pattern for bag making um yes i have i do have a paid for pattern on my website which shows you how to make either a drawstring or the zipped version of my bags and you can either buy them as a separate um, pattern or there's one that's combined which is a slightly reduced price um, for to make project bags like I do so there we go um, that's so that's me ask me anything questions and I'm on to the confessions next I have one naughty confession and one not so naughty confession <laughs> <laughs> my lovely friend Rachel sent me some yarn from Burrow and Saw and I think this is absolutely gorgeous it's some blue and pink yarn and this is called Venus in Jeans and it's 75% merino 25% nylon and 400 meters so I don't know what I'm going to make with it yet but it's lovely thank you Rachel and there was also a really pretty mini in there with it um, and that's equally lovely That'll probably go in my cosy memories blanket because I do like um, to sort of treat myself to lots of different colours in there. And then it came with a beautiful stitch marker and a little tea bag as well in this bag. Um, and I shall show you the stitch marker or progress keeper a little bit closer to the camera. There we go. So it's got a lobster clasp but a ring that you could also use as a stitch marker. Um, and a lovely key, isn't that sweet? So that was from Burrow and Saw. There we go. Isn't that a beautiful card that came with it? Um, I will leave links to things in my show notes if you want to find Burrow and Saw online. Um, so what else have I got? Oh, I bought a PDF pattern. Um, so I'll put a picture of the pattern up here. So it's the Romy Top by Tilly and the Buttons. And that was on my Make 9. And I saw that Tilly and the Buttons had got 10% off. So I thought, well, I shall buy it because then <laughs> I'm saving myself 10%. Um, I do like to buy PDF sewing patterns just because if I print it out and cut it out of a particular size I can always print it out again I've always got go, the go back of being able to cut out any size I want um, so I do like a PDF pattern um, I'm not sure whether the the ten percent off is still going on, but if you go onto the Tilly and the Buttons website, if you register your email address, you'll get um, lots of updates um, like every week or so, um, and they quite often have discounts and things, so it's quite handy to have those emails. So that's all my confessions. So I've not been that naughty. <laughs> Plus, the top was on my make nine list, so that's not naughty at all, I think, anyway. So I've just got my shop update now and I've got 14 new colourways to share with you. So I'm going to go through the one by one and I'm going to show you them on the Merino Nylon base but they are available on other bases that I offer as well. But just to make it easy I'll show you all on the Merino Nylon. So first of all we have These Days which is based on the Bon Jovi song which I absolutely love. So it's different tones of grey with a little bit of splashes of yellowy greens so that's the first one the second one is what a feeling named after the irene cara song and it really makes me want to say what a feeling <laughs> oh dear anyway let's go on this is called magic dance and this is based on the song that's out of the labyrinth and this color is basically the color that sticks out to me most um, on the front cover of the film but magic dance is the my favorite song um, from the movie and david bowie is the singer i've got the next one is come on eileen so I thought that this looked quite a sort of vintagey colourway and that just reminds me um, of Dexy's Midnight Runners Come On Eileen. So there we go. That's the, that colourway. And next I've got Believe, which is based on the Cher song, Believe. And that's a purple with some other purpley speckles on there as well. Um next is a turquoisey teal color with splashes of blue 
and that's Don't Stop Me Now. Next, I had to call it this. <laughs> this is pink with grey speckles on and it's called I'm Too Sexy and that's named after the Right Said Fred song <laughs> from the 90s just because we need a little bit of silliness at the moment. So that's the first set. So actually I'm going to do those in minis, in mini form. Um, and that will be set three that's listed on my website because I've already got two there already. So they, you'll be able to buy the, the full set of those. That's sort of the sort of brighter, darker colours. So I've then got a second set that's got sort of lighter shades in it. The first of which is I Think We're Alone Now. And that's after the Tiffany song that I remember greatly from my childhood. So that's that one. I then have Holding Out for a Hero, which is some gorgeous turquoise greens and greys together. I love that one. Um, the next one is Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now. And that's like a pale corally pink with bright pink, grey and sort of yellow speckles in there. That's really lovely as well, if I don't say so myself. <laughs> the next one is Smells Like Teen Spirit, named after the Nirvana song. And that's a turquoise colour with some pinks, some purples and some greens in there. I think that's one of my favourites as well. Next one is Tell It To My Heart. I love this. It's just like pale pinks and beiges in there as well. A nice, subtle, very wearable colourway. And I'm thinking about one that mixing that with one of my shawls as well. So I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then I've got Rock Me Amadeus. And that's blue, green and purple. It's similar um, to Saving All My Love For You, but it's got some blues in there as well. And then last but not least, that's Lucky Star. Very pale pink with some grey speckles on there as well. So there we go. And I'm also offering that in a mini set. Um, and that's sort of all pale colours together. I think that they go well quite quite well together i was thinking about maybe um knitting a pair of socks in those because i do like to have sort of lots of different colors in there so i'd just like to say that i'm still posting internationally um until royal mail say otherwise and i'm doing so a couple of times a week um so things might take slightly longer to post out and also because um the way of the world at the moment the post might actually take a little bit longer to get to you so for us for example it normally takes sort of one to two weeks to get over there um but it might be taking slightly longer so do bear that in mind and the shop update is this evening which is the 3rd of april at 7 p.m so all the new colorways will be in the shop update this evening so my shawls that I might cast on for the shawl along. So first of all, I thought about putting these two together. So this is Love Shack mixed with Tell It To My Heart. Because I think that those go really well together. So Love Shack has got delicate speckles of brown and darker pink in there. So it tones in really well with the pinks and browns. So I'm thinking that for the Hohi Locatelli um, Pure Joy shawl, so those two together um but i am wondering whether to do the slumber shawl by stephen west for those two colors as well but i did have another idea for the slumber shawl is smells like teen spirit which is this one at the bottom with the top one which is nothing's going to stop us now so i thought those two would work really well together there we go so those two I don't know which way round to do it. Maybe it'd be better doing the slumber shawl in these two um, and the pure joy in those. Ooh, it's difficult. And actually, I have another shawl that I want to make as well. And that's the Jigsaw Puzzle by Stephen West. And that needs eight different colours. So each of these sets has seven colours. So I'm thinking maybe the paler coloured one um, with an additional colourway. Maybe this one as well. Because I can still use colourway twice. <laughs> 
so lots and lots of things that I want to cast on and you'll see next week which one I decide to cast on first because I can't cast them all on because that would just be silly wouldn't it maybe I should <laughs> um anyway i think that's all for today thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and i'll see you on the next video bye